first. <laughs> Let it go, the whole show. I mean, this is a lousy song. Yeah? Oh, it's a miserable song. It's right up there with The Eye of the Tiger, which is one of the Great five movie, worst though. songs of all Great time. Great movie. All-time classic. Tiger? Yeah. Well, the movie it was oh, in. Yeah, well, that's all right, Scott. Jordan's Bulls were introduced to this song every night, weren't they? Maybe not. That's not, that's no, not good memories for me. Okay. Well, it is the final countdown, nonetheless, Guy, it whether is. you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> there is just one trading day left before we ring in the new year and a new decade. And it's looking to be an ugly end of the year with stocks posting their biggest losses in four weeks. So should you hold off on popping the bubbly or was today just a minor blip? Well, I mean, I think it's a minor blip because I've thought the market's going to go down probably since September or so. And I thought and I've said it on the show in the early December that December is going to be at best a choppy month. But at worst, probably a very volatile month didn't pan out that way. So, look, I do think things have gotten ahead of themselves. I thought that for a while. But there are certain things that have worked for the last six months that I think will work again into early 2020. Healthcare has done unbelievably well. I think uh, big cap pharma continues to outperform in my book. Hospitals as well, we've talked about that. We're going to talk about gold later on the show. I do think that's a huge story. I think the dollar weakens in the first half of the year, and I think energy stocks are going to continue to grind higher from here, Scott. You're entitled to a, uh, a down day, given the run we've been on. No doubt about it. I mean, listen, I think there's been so little volatility in the last few months, and I think it's important to remember what's been going on in the last few months. The Fed has effectively gone into some form of quantitative easing. This happened after we had three consecutive um, 25 basis put uh, Fed funds cut, you know, since July 31st. So when you look at the lack of volatility, you look at the way the market has moved over the last few months, it makes sense. It's reminiscent of those days of QE in a way. And then you put the calendar in there and the removal of at least the near term trade fears. And you have yourself a market that is just inching to record highs into the end of the year um, at all time highs for the year. And I guess the issue is, where does it go really early in the new year? Are we extended? Is um, sentiment kind of overly complacent? No doubt about it. And you probably have that trend line, which is back to 3125 or something. I'm sure Steve had some. This, this, is a, this was an overshoot level, 32 to 3250. This is where I had thought in a perfect world it gets to. We're there. I think you got to sell the market now. Really? Yeah. Q1, I mean, what's, what are we hoping for now? You're going to get guys that miss the market rally. They're going to take another shot in Q1, try to short it again. Why risk it? Why be too just, cute? It just feels like a lot of the major stuff is so out of the way until earnings. But don't they always say, you know, you, 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 barring we've, already, we've already, already been anyway. waiting. We've climbed that wall of worry. We've had trade. We've had the Fed. We've, we've had the worries about economic slowdown. What else is there? I don't know, but why would we be done just to be done? Well, you could be done because the calendar switches over and you have a lot of uh, portfolio managers who are putting on new bets. They're not going to do it now. Waiting for the turn of the calendar. They chase the market. If you think about how everyone needed to get a lot longer than they were in the last two months of the year, there were a lot of funds who had to do that. Now they're going to maybe take a shot on the short side. How do you see it? Look, of course there's going to be a pullback in the first part of next year. The market's not going to go up forever in a, in a completely straight line. But, but we'd be buyers of any weakness. You know, our view is that if you can't put up the recession, shut up about the bear market. Bull markets end in recessions. That was our call a year ago when we were calling for 3,100. It's our call now. We're calling for 35 next year. We think there could be upside to that target. If it drops, I think that's an opportunity well, to get in. Well, what happens if you get to 35 in somewhat short order. That's kind of the Ed yeah. Denny nervousness, right? So that's up about 10%. Could pull 10 yeah. to 20% back if you have a melt Let's up go to back 35. to January 2018. The stock market was up 8%. This was, a, you know, in the month or two after the tax cut was put in place. And I think you couldn't find anybody to sell a stock. And then what happened is the realization that earnings might not be what the, at, where the market was trading at that point. I think we have a very similar situation here. We have a stock market that's up nearly 30%. We have earnings estimates for 2019 that have come down materially since the start of the year. So we have no earnings growth, but we have a stock market that's up 30%. Right, so but the question I think you said I think I think you said earlier when you when you have the Fed creating this liquidity and there were a lot of people who didn't believe in the market rally and that's why I think we overshot a lot of different targets for the S&P. I do think you get that shot to your point I think you're making to on uh, earnings estimates where I don't think people have brought them in enough going forward. You think people are still too optimistic? I think people are too optimistic are going forward and a lot of this was created and I, and I, I do agree with Steve I think that this dip 
that is coming, that eventually will come, is a viable event. But I think that you're too cute to think we go straight to 35. Well, if I told you we'd get 5% earnings growth next year, is that good enough to keep the market climbing? I think people will be thrilled with 5% earnings growth. I don't think it's happening. I mean, to Dan's point, you have negative to flat earnings growth at best, and I just don't see where it's coming from. So if you were to say next year you get 5% earnings growth, I think people would cheer that with both hands. I just don't see it happening. And, and quickly, in terms of recession, I understand, but my pushback would be I think a market sell-off causes a recession more than a recession causes a market sell-off. That's a longer conversation, but I think it's an important one because I think people view the market as the ultimate arbiter yeah, but you need, you of would the need overall one, economy. You would need one heck of a sell-off With to a cause a recession. Quickly, quickly go back to last October, November, when the market went down basically 19.5% over the course of a month yeah. and a half. That Consumer spending stopped on a dime. Consumer spending is... The economy. But when the reason the market stopped went spending, down, though, at that point in time was on fears of a recession, that the Fed was going to put us into a recession. Well, I mean, so that's that's why I would beg and the Fed, And the Fed was tightening, too. So they, they were shrinking the well, balance sheet. The they were, was gonna so there was a whole bunch of – so we have, the, we have the opposite of everything that's going on. And the economy is in a, in a much better position as far as the unknowns with, and, with unemployment rate the way it is with trade the where it is and the Fed where they are on their stance. That's what's so important. You can't talk about just the 30 percent increase in the market without talking about the 20 percent decline that happened in a month and a half beforehand. If you look at where we are versus last September, we're up 10 percent. We think we can do another 10 percent over the next year, two, three percent earnings growth, a little bit of multiple expansion. It's not I, heroic. Uh, you know, but look what it took to get there just this year, Steve. That's my issue. You have Fed funds at well, one. It took was the Fed. One and a half. Yeah. You have you have the ten year Treasury yield below twenty uh, two percent. You have the Fed expanded yeah, their balance sheet by four hundred billion dollars over the last four months. If Jerome Powell does anything, he's going to lose credibility. He is on the sidelines. Rates are going to stay low. But he's but he's still adding. So, so he's still adding. Think, so he's still adding stimulative. liquidity yeah. with expanding the balance sheet because yeah. when they were when they were when, when the letting uh, stuff roll off on the balance sheet, it was equivalent to tightening. Yeah. Now they're expanding. It's equivalent to loosening. Even if he does nothing, he's right. already easing Just look at the monetary, yield curve. monetary it's at policy. It's at a 14-month. It, it's as steep as it's been in almost a year and a half. And look, I think for the earnings growth and the GDP growth, I think it's bottomed. And I think you're going to see the PMIs turn. But Steve, and I is think that the cyclicals really that important are that the, bringing the, that the, up. The Fed fixed the yield curve. That's why they uh, that's why mm -hmm. they lowered rates 75 basis points. To me, that you have the 210 spread at 25 bits. That doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot. The Fed actually cut rates for the first time in 10 years, 10 years into this cycle. So to me, I guess what I'm thinking about the stock market into 2020 is that a lot of this year was just multiple expansion. You're looking at the S&P trading nearly 20 times earnings after no earnings growth. That's discounting a whole heck of a lot of good news in 2020. So to your point, Scott, you started the conversation. What's next? It's just earnings. That's what the market trades on. If we are not going to get material earnings growth and we're not going to get signs of that as we get guidance for 2020, I would expect that's how a sell-off comes. And you probably get back to 3,000. That was the breakout level of late October. Depending how low rates remain. Because relative to where interest rates are, the market at you know, 18, 19 times, whatever it is, isn't necessarily expensive. Well, and look, if you go back over three years, 85% of the run is on earnings. So, yeah, multiple expansion was the story in 2019 off of that 20% decline. You go back three years, it's 85% earnings growth. You go back over five, it's 50-50 yeah, earnings, earnings and multiple. Zero, percent, zero interest rates for 10 years, right? The record buybacks. I mean, so it's not really organic earnings growth, right? I mean, is it or no? We're up 500% and it organically is sitting in our account. So we'll take it. <laughs>